How's it going, guys? This is Mike Madigan, episode two of the Vino Lit Show. Excuse me while I adjust myself in this in this chair. Uh, I'm your host, Mike Madigan. I'm reshooting episode two because um, the first time that I shot it, it went over ten minutes, and I didn't know that you couldn't um, post ten minutes or more than ten minutes on YouTube. Uh, maybe you can, but either way, mine wouldn't let me. So here I am reshooting. Um, it's really a shame that you guys didn't get to see um, the show and the way it turned out. It turned out really nice. I started off the show sipping an Incadu Sauvignon Blanc. Um, I believe the vintage is um, 2008. They're pouring it in their tasting room right now. Incadu is located in the Kenwood uh, Shopping Center. Uh, the Sauvignon Blanc is outstanding, very crisp, very balanced, um, not too grassy, not too much mineral, really, really good. Um, Wine is literature. The name of the show, The Vino Lit Show. I believe that wine is literature because it is literature. Uh, not just because of the poetic elements in the, uh, in the bottle uh, and in your glass after you pour the wine, but also the occasion that it creates. <clears throat> Excuse me, how it affects the characters. Um, wine, wine makes an occasion. We talk about wine, or maybe we don't talk about wine. Maybe we just sip wine at an occasion, whatever that occasion may be. So, um, wine has affected literature um, for centuries. Uh, it has affected the human experience for centuries, and it has changed my life. So, vino lit, wine is literature. Um, I'll talk about this, not every show, because I don't want to bore you, but um, I'll get back into it later. Um, <clears throat> Let's see. Oh yeah, another thing about wine is literature. How um, when I personify wine in my wine reviews, that's kind of what I mean. How when wine reveals character, it becomes something more than just a liquid or a beverage uh, or something to pair with food. It becomes its own entity, not a cognitive entity per se, but um, definitely its own entity and uh, one that should be appreciated. Wine is literature. Vino lit. I hate it when my uh, laptop goes dim. So if it if the picture's disrupted, that's because I'm shooting this on my laptop. Um, I got into a little bit of uh, cinematic criticism, a little bit of movie criticism, Avatar, uh, and how I think that that is literally one of the most overhyped and overrated movies of all time. Did I enjoy watching it? Absolutely. The special effects were amazing. I mean, tremendous, unique. I've never seen special effects like that ever. It was it was enjoyable. I mean, I, I sat through it. It wasn't like I was wasting my time, but uh, in terms of a... In terms of having um, some profound significance or uh, impact on me as a viewer, it, it lacked that. Uh, the dialogue and the screenplay was template. Uh, the acting was acting, um, and I just uh, I thought it was overhyped. Is it enjoyable? Yes, but do not do not expect to be moved um, in any profound way. Like I said, so also last episode, um, well, the first taping of episode two of the Vino Lit Show, I sipped. I did come through on my promise. I sipped a Santa Barbara wine, a Pinot. Uh, the winery is Taz, T-A-Z. It's their 2007 uh, Santa Barbara County, I believe that's the appellation, uh, Santa Barbara County Pinot Noir. It was incredible. Very, very good. Um, oh my gosh, it was incredible. Let me move this bottle over here. I'll talk to you guys about this in a little bit. Um, spoken word, uh, I'm not really writing as much spoken word as uh, I'd like to, but um, Actually, yesterday I was. I was writing a little bit of spoken word yesterday. Actually, I should probably keep this right here. Um, so uh, I've been writing a lot of fiction, um, kind of playing around with room notes, um, my recurring uh, fiction piece on the blog, Mike's Log No Blog. Um, and somebody the other day asked me, is, um, is it fact or fiction? Is it fiction or nonfiction uh, room notes? Um, a little bit of both. Uh, you know, I mean, how, how can you... Sometimes the line between fiction and nonfiction is indiscernible. You can't really tell what's real and what's not. And I think that's the beautiful thing about fiction and nonfiction and writing in general. Um, and I, I don't really know if it's relevant. You know, you read the piece, you consider it for what it is. And uh, that's what I would tell my students. So I don't know. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying that, uh, you know, just appreciate the piece and appreciate the moment as a reader connecting with the piece. So most of it, though, is... I would say nonfiction. I mean, I just I, I embellish a little bit here and there, and maybe tweak a detail or two uh, for the sake of the piece. So there you go. Um, Starlight. Remember, I talked last episode about their Zinfandel. I went to their mixer um, with a coworker of mine uh, recently, and I tried their Viognier, and it is incredible. Uh, one of the best Viogniers I've ever had. Really good. Not too sweet. Um, a little bit of a. Um, as I remember, almost like an almond quality to it, an almond caramel quality uh, on the mid palate and finish. It was really, really good. So um, 
couple pitches I want to give you guys. Um, Dr. Zeno, my buddy Dr. Zeno at the Wine Log, www.winelog.net. Um, what a great resource for people who enjoy wine. Uh, I, oh man, that, it's a good, it's really a good website. Go check it out. Dr. Zeno, uh, his name is uh, Ward Cadell. He's a wine blogger. Um, he and I were kind of in touch while he was up there at the uh, wine bloggers conference in Walla Walla, Washington. Um, just a little bit, but uh, he's a good guy. Check out his, uh, check out his wine log. It's really good. Rick Backus. Uh, I just had lunch with him the other day. Uh, I want to pitch his book really quick because, um, if you're in social media or if you're interested in getting involved in social media. I think it's a great, great book, great resource, really fun to read. He comes across, and he is, uh, very humble, very easily, uh, easy, easy to read. Excuse me, I'm, it's the caffeine. Um, 75's, uh, 75 Savory Tips for Social Media success, success. Oh my gosh, Rick Backus, Quick Bites, so check that out. Okay, um, also Wine Biz Radio, I want to give them a quick shout out. I think they need a little bit more love than they're getting, so winebizradio.com, check them out. I've been on their show once. Um, I hope to get on again soon. Kaz, my brother Kaz, uh, Kaz Winery, uh, his wines are very unique, uh, obscure varietals, really cool flavor profiles, and his tasting room, oh man, it's <laughs> it's so cool. It's like a, it reminds me of um, something like from a movie, like a, the, the workshop of an alchemist or a wizard or something. It's, it's, it's dope, to say the least. Kaz, check them out. Kaz Winery. Also, the Wine Emporium over there in Sebastopol. Uh, I can always count on them for incredible, unique, hard-to-find wine. Usually, I go over there to um, get like really weird or wacky, unique blends. Um, and they, he, uh, my, uh, my buddy James over there, he and Kai, they always have something. Always have something. I'm sorry if I'm stuttering right now. It's the caffeine, I swear to God. Uh, and I didn't sleep very well last night, so I don't know. You don't need to know that. Oh, also, another thing that I came across, you guys. Uh, listen to this. The Calif um, California Wine Wine and Food Alliance. I think I'm saying that right. Ca yeah, CaliforniaWineAndFoodAlliance.com. Um, I was recently turned on to this, and it looks really promising, really cool. Let me move this over here, actually. Um, so check that out. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see how that how that develops. Um, Wine and Food Alliance, what a cool idea. So check them out. Okay, what else do I have? Oh yeah, finally, you guys, this episode, how much time do I have? A little bit more, not that much. Um, I want to pitch Sellers of Sonoma. Sellers of Sonoma, uh, my buddy Scott, my buddies, Scott and Mike own that place down on Railroad Square. It uh, what a cool wine bar! You can buy wine, taste wine. They are so cool. They have a um, a Tuesday every like a Tuesday live broadcast. They do it every Tuesday. I've been on that um, once. I hope to get on there again soon too. But um, they are so cool. They're so nice, and they have just the best wine. One of them, one of my favorites, being this one right here, the uh, the Bono uh, Bono uh, 2007 Napa Valley Syrah. Oh, uh, really, really good. Smooth, velvety. Actually, I took some notes on it last night. How am I doing on time? Not good. Uh, I just have deep, full, dark, like a deep, full, dark, like a saturated brush on a canvas. I'm going to write all this out. It'll be on the blog soon, I promise. So um, that's it for the show, you guys, today. Sorry if I appear rushed. I just don't want it to be over 10 minutes, um, and I'm getting close. So um, next episode, um, I'll do some tasting on the air like I did during the first take of this second episode, but, um, we'll just kind of see where it goes again. Sorry if I'm rushed, but, um, you know, uh, that's the way it is when you have a, have a triple shot mocha. So Bono Syrah, Sellers of Sonoma, everyone else I pitched, go check them out. Uh, again, thank you very much for watching. I promise the third episode will be better than this one. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, one more thing, you guys. Um, if you are writing anything, spoken word, uh, short stories, prose, responses to wine, wine reviews, please let me read them. I really want to check them out. All right? That's all I got for today, so I will see you soon. Peace.